My name is Jason Andrade. I'm an associate professor at the University of British Columbia in Canada, and we'll be talking about the early invasive intervention for atrial fibrillation trial or early AF. Previous studies have looked at the use of ablation as a therapeutic option for patients with atrial fibrillation. Uh, the majority of the evidence base supporting ablation as a treatment option has been derived in patients who have already failed drugs, so they inherently <clears throat> bias the results uh, towards ablation. Uh, there's only been uh, several small studies to date that have looked at uh, ablation as a first-line treatment option, so in patients who have not yet failed a drug. Uh, these studies were uh, relatively small numbers of patients and showed mixed results. Uh, because of that, uh, we felt it was necessary to revisit the question, especially in light of the uh, purpose-built crowd balloon catheter offering more consistent results. Our study evaluated 303 patients with treatment naive atrial fibrillation, so they could not have been taking regular antiarrhythmic drugs or uh, failed those drugs prior to enrollment. We randomized patients to first-line catheter cryoballoon ablation or first-line antiarrhythmic drug using uh, standard titration protocols. Uh, the study uh, implanted loop recorders in every patient to evaluate the rhythm outcomes of atrial fibrillation recurrence, and we followed them uh, for one year following treatment initiation. For the first three months in the antiarrhythmic drug group, we had standardized protocols to guide antiarrhythmic drug titration with a goal of complete arrhythmia suppression on continuous monitoring. In the ablation group, the three months was a post-procedural blanking period. The majority of patients enrolled in the study were relatively young. Uh, there were about two thirds men and they were relatively free of comorbidities. Uh, that being said, they were highly symptomatic with their atrial fibrillation with high CCS SAF scores or uh, would be a correlate would be a high ERA score. Their effect scores were in the moderate to severely impaired category and they were endorsing three symptomatic AF episodes per month prior to enrollment. The key results of the study uh, was that an early or first line ablation approach resulted in a significant reduction in all arrhythmia endpoints. Uh, we observed a significant reduction in the time to first recurrence of any atrial tachyarrhythmia, uh, which was our primary endpoint and was reduced by an absolute 25% between the two groups. We also observed reductions in symptomatic atrial tachyarrhythmia, any atrial fibrillation, symptomatic atrial fibrillation, we saw observed a significant reduction in overall burden or time spent in atrial fibrillation on continuous monitoring, as well as a significant reduction on the number of days with any atrial fibrillation recorded. And we also evaluated quality of life outcomes. We saw that both groups significantly improved following treatment and initiation. However, the magnitude of improvement was significantly greater in the ablation group, and this was seen on our effect questionnaire. Uh, we also observed more patients were asymptomatic at one year uh, following uh, treatment initiation. Our study uh, demonstrates that ablation is a reasonable first line option in appropriate patients. In patients who are uh, considered treatment naive, ablation results in a reduction in arrhythmia outcomes uh, with a magnitude that is significantly greater than antiarrhythmic drugs. We did not observe any significant safety signal uh, with adverse events being comparable between the two groups. And so in my mind, uh, this tells us that we can consider ablation as a first line treatment option for patients with highly symptomatic atrial fibrillation. Given our use of uh, continuous rhythm monitoring, I think that our study is relatively definitive in terms of arrhythmia outcomes. Uh, we clearly know the rate of recurrence now with antiarrhythmic drugs, as well as following ablation. Uh, the one area where we uh, did not see uh, a significant difference between the groups was on our healthcare utilization outcomes. Uh, we observed a trend towards less hospitalization in a year uh, in the ablation group with a p-value of 0.055. However, uh, cardioversion and emergency room visits were reduced, but not significantly so with ablation. So the big question in my mind is whether or not first-line ablation will reduce these healthcare utilization outcomes in the long term, and whether that translates out into a cost-effective therapeutic choice. 
Uh, the other area where we're looking at uh, on the follow-up phase is whether or not a first-line ablation approach changes the trajectory of disease and alters the progression to persistent atrial fibrillation. Uh, we have uh, a planned three-year follow-up phase for early F that's underway and will likely report within a year and a half.